So, you are discussing analytic tabula and then we have proved some said to be inconsistent, but the definition of inconsistency and consistency should be looked at exactly the way we have defined that should be taken that way only. Like you say that a set of uh, propositions is inconsistent, so now it is tabula inconsistency not PC inconsistency. So, it is told to be inconsistent if there is a closed tabula for the set of propositions. Okay. So, all that you want is you construct one such tabula which is closing that is what you want to check and for consistency just its negation that you have to see whatever tabula you construct it remains open. Okay. Every tabula for the set of propositions remains open it is never closed then you can say it is consistent. So, okay, for inconsistency it will be then easier right. For example, let us see one more. So, this set is inconsistent. So, we will be constructing a tabula for this. We just start with all of them at the root. Okay. Then go on applying the tabular rules. So, now I see not R, not T, there are already literals, and there are three others which are compound propositions on which tabular rules can be applied, and all of them are branching. Okay. So, any one of them I can choose and proceed. So, let me choose this one, it is smaller. So, this gives two branches one is not S, another is not T. Is that okay? Because all that you remember is if it is in the form A implies B, it is equivalent to not A or B because of the semantic trees. So, then it will have two branches one will be not A, another will be B. Okay. If you forget the tabular rules, then you can reconstruct it that way. Now, what happens? Nothing is closing really. Okay. We have only T, not R, then not S, another path is T, not R, not V. There are of course, other propositions in the path. Then one more we can start with. So, I will start with this one. Okay. They will be same of course. Let us try. So, this one gives again two branches not of not S and T another is Q. Okay. But now, if you go to the other path you wanted to expand it breadth first then once you are using it that again you have to add here. Okay. So, let us do that. Fine. So, again this one gives two branches not not S and not T. Okay. Same way this Fine. Is that right? So, now this path closes because not S and not not S. So, that closes. This path also closes because it is T not T. Same way this we have now two other open branches, open paths. I have Q not S not R T and this. So, there I have used A implies not V, this also has been used, first proposition has not been used till now. Fine. So, we can still expand this path, right. So, let us expand that path. I will take that path here. So, on that I have P implies Q implies R. So, that will give rise to two branches not of P implies Q and R. This one, it does not close, no. There is no not S, not S is this side, this is not closing, huh? only this is closing, not T. Yes, good. So, that also you have to expand again. Huh? Okay, Let us see this. First one is Q, which is open. There we have this that gives rise to again 
not of p implies q, not implies rule, that will give two. One is p, another is not q. So one is p, another is not q. Now this not q is closing, right? There is q there. Anything else is closing? It is here. This path we are taking there. Okay. So we have t not r not s q there. Not q has closed. Okay. What about p? That path still remains open. P and not q, right? It is not opening branch. They will be on the same branch, right? So both the things will be there. You can write P this way and not Q this way. Or sometimes we don't write this vertical bar. We just leave it. Okay. Now you see that that closes with Q itself. So there is no open path there. What about the other side? There is R. You have not R on the same path, right? So that also closes. Now, what about this Q? The whole thing will be copied there, huh? because there we want to apply this also. So, the whole thing will be coming here. That subtree, what you see here, that is also for the other Q. Fine. So, you have to take another copy really. On same page of paper, you have to do it exactly. Fine. So, that means this set is inconsistent. Okay. Not not s is there, so you have another branch. There again you have to expand. So now suppose you expand it. What happens there? Again you have to come to this place. Okay. So again the same copy will be there. Now once it is there, what do you get? It will close with p will close with not p. Right? What about the other one? That is R, and that is not R. Is it clear? The same copy will be here again. Okay. Now there you have P not Q and R. P not Q in the same path. So P not Q with that uh, you have not not S. You have not P. That closes. And with the other one, you have R and you have not R here. That also closes. Okay. Is that clear? So now for consistency, what should we do? Let us start. Say, I take only this much. What should I do? So we start the tabula now. But the tabula copy is there already. Can you see there? Suppose I don't have this. I have only 1, 2, 3, 4 propositions. So, for those 4 propositions, I have already made the tabula here. Okay. The first proposition was never used till now. Therefore, this is the tabula. Okay. In this tabula, what happens? I have a closed path, closed path, closed path. Now, there are 3 other open paths. Fine. Now, from this can you say that it is consistent or not? Hmm? Yes? See, I can tell now, because all the compound propositions have been expanded with, they have been used. right? Suppose it is not that, I have not done up to that, I just stay here. I just prune the tree, I do not expand, I keep up to this place. Now, I say that this tabula is also open, because this is also a tabula for the same propositions, same set of propositions. I have not used them, right. but as a tabula, it says it is an open tabula, up to this also it is an open tabula. Right? But here you are telling, you will decide that it is consistent. But up to this stage, if I take, you will say it is not decidable here. 
have to go for some more steps right the reason is you have not used some of the premises right so that amounts to telling that a tabula should be completed is it right if the tabula is completed then only you can decide whether it is consistent or inconsistent a completed tabula if remains open then it has to be consistent because essentially what happens for consistency you need that every tabula should remain open not the completed tabula or any completed tabula you want every tabula to remain open now if you take a completed tabula then essentially it has a copy of all the tabulas okay because all the premises have been used so whatever way they can be expanded either they will close or if they don't close then that open path will be still present in any other tabula fine that's the reason we say that it is consistent when some completed tabula remains open you don't have to go for every now so completed tabula becomes helpful fine let's see uh, one more example how to decide this say q or r so we start with this set we don't know whether this is consistent or inconsistent so if you guess that it is inconsistent then you just go for one construction of the tabula if you are not able to guess you will be going for the completed tabula right where on every path a rule should have been applied on the compound propositions okay that has to be seen then it is a completed tabula but you don't need that even if before that it closes then you stop there because a completed path is one which is either closed or if it is open then then all the compound propositions on all the compound propositions rules have been applied fine so that's what we are going to do so let's start the tabula say i have to take all those propositions at the root fine now you go for say branch out from this one so i get not t u okay let me take the other one after this so that gives me not not r and s and t here also fine then i can proceed say s and t i'll break down i have not yet checked where it is closing or not huh? is it closing yes not t with t it is closing so i don't have to expand this further this also i don't have to expand okay so there is one more this is to be used so let me use it now so it gets not p and q or r again here also not p q or r now not p is there uh, you don't have a p there on the path and here also you have q r here again you have q r is it a complete tabula completed tabula each path should be completed so this path it is closed so it is completed this path is open okay but on every proposition occurring in that path every compound proposition tabular rule has been applied therefore that is also completed if you take any other say this one so q or r is another compound proposition it need not be the premise it can be obtained from another premise so on that also it has been applied on all these that is also applied so that is also a completed path but open path right so we decide that yes it is completed but it is open therefore the set of propositions is consistent okay see you can also make it very mechanical the way we have done is we have just chosen whatever is convenient for us this i thought will be convenient it is given as to only two literals directly so i use it and so on but when you do it by a machine it is not able to find out some such heuristic right of course you can give those heuristics 
fit the algorithm with some heuristics like that. But let us have a crude algorithm which says you just start the tabula systematically, take some ordering of the propositions, whichever ordering you decide in the beginning itself, do not change it later. Now, follow that ordering, go on using the rules. Okay? But there is one thing which we have to modify that. For example, we have taken not p q or r, this comes from the premise p implies q or r. Okay? Now, immediately we take q and r here, those two paths we have taken. So, imagine we have not used it at the last, but used it at the beginning. Right? I can start a tabula from there itself. Say, I take a copy of that here. Suppose I use the first one. So, there I will have two branches, one is not P, another with Q or R. Okay. Now, what happens? You can apply rule here directly instead of going further using other premise, but in a systematic tabula we will not do that. We want to see that all the premises have been used slowly and then we will develop it pathwise. We look at a path see whatever is the compound proposition from the top, use a rule on that. Right? That is what a systematic tabula is, because what happens here in propositional logic it does not matter, but later suppose uh, you will be have some opportunity to reuse the rules. Right? The same compound proposition can be overused, many times it will give rise to different conclusions. Okay? Like suppose you say for each x p x in natural numbers, I could have taken, taken p 1, I could have taken p 2, I could have taken p 3 and this is infinite. So, if I proceed from p x, what to conclude? I say p 1, p 2, p 3, where to stop? Right? So, we will make it systematic, so that it can be again extended to first order logic later, that is the reason. So, what we do here, we will not apply a rule on the recently got premises or whatever has been obtained from the rules. We will start again looking at the path, from the top of the path you go on finding the compound proposition apply the rules, follow it systematically. Right? So, let us see how does it look like. There is one more difficulty, suppose your set of propositions is infinite, then what will you do? There will be problem. right? in applying the rules and thinking that the tabula will finish there, but it is possible that the tabula still will become finite, if it is closing everything is closed, after that there are only redundant propositions, huh? I have p, I have not p, after that everything is redundant, right? it will simply close. Okay? So, similar thing can also happen even if the set of premises is infinite. Okay? So, let us think a bit how to give the systematic tabula for the infinite sets even directly. So, anyway it will be a countable set, because the set of propositions is countable. So, whatever set you take set of propositions subset of the set of all propositions will be countable. So, in that you can have an ordering. Right? So, let us start with a set of propositions sigma. So, let us write sigma equal to x 1, x 2 and so on. So, we are thinking of this as an ordered set now, the way it has been written that is its ordering. Right? x 1 is the first one, x 2 is the second one, x 3 is the third one and so on. Okay. So, now what do we do? We will define the generation of systematic tabula in stages, because there are infinite things. So, each stage will be defined inductively after one stage. Right? So, first stage is this, in stage 1 what do you do? See the problem is we cannot take everything at the root the way we are doing earlier. So, you have to start with 1 that is why the stages. Right? So, introduce x 1 or take it take x 1 on the root x 1 as the root. Okay? We start with that. Then in stage n what will it do? In each stage we are introducing 1, then we are expanding 
starting from the top. Okay. So, in stage n plus 1 we assume that x n has been introduced already or stage n has already been performed, then we are, we are going to do in the next stage that is what we are concerned with. Right. So, suppose stage n has been performed. Now, in stage n plus 1 we introduce where to introduce really suppose you want to introduce x n plus 1 right where will you introduce all the all the open branches if some path is already closed there is no need to introduce there right is that ok. So, that is what we are going to do. Fine. Then, in stage n has been performed, first you have to check after this whether any path closes. If closes, you do not have to do anything, right. So, first check that, check whether any path is open, that is the first thing to do. Then, for each open path, you have to do something. So, for each open path row, let us call it row, expand the path as follows. So, how do we expand? First, we have to introduce x n plus 1, right. So, introduce or just add whatever you write x n plus 1 to the path as a leaf of course, right. Your introduction will be on the leaf level always not from the root that is what we are following. So, introduce at the leaf itself x n plus 1 becomes the new leaf now it is a child to the earlier leaf whatever leaf was there on the row fine. Then what we do scan row from root to leaf uh, for a compound proposition say A on which a rule has not been applied. Suppose that is the first. So, you are scanning from the top root to the leaf, top down way. On that path only row, not other paths, other paths we are forgetting now. We are trying to expand only that path, and each path we will have to expand anyway. Fine. So, on that path from the root, when you proceed, you find one A compound proposition on which rule has not been applied. Then apply the rule at the child or children, whatever it is. If it is a stacking rule, then there will be one child or uh, two may be on the same path also, right. But if it is a branching rule, then there will be two branches out from the leaf. So, add those child or children, whatever it is, add suitable child or children, huh? or you can write propositions. Once you write suitable, that takes care of huh? propositions to the leaf of row. Now it is really for x n. X n is at the root now, leaf. X n plus one, right? So leaf of row. This is how you expand. So one step of the expansion is over. This is what we have to perform in stage n plus one, right? But there is one condition. Condition is suppose sigma has only n number of propositions, then you cannot find x n plus 1, right. So, that is the condition. If there is at least x n plus 1, then use it, 
for infinite only we are thinking for finite case there is possible that at a stage all the propositions are over so in x n plus 1 all that you have to do is look for the compound propositions and go on expanding it right so if it cannot be further expanded stop there yes We are not expanding totally. Suppose you want to come to here, P implies Q R R. So at one stage it will give you not P Q R R, Q R R remains. We are not expanding at that stage. Only one from the top. So it will, it may be expanded in the next stage or maybe later. I don't know when. Right? Again, I have to come from the top. I get this one first. Right? That is why it is systematic. We are not worried about whether it is finished or not. Huh? Okay? So, we should add something here. Introduce x n plus 1 to the path as a leaf provided sigma has more than n propositions. If it does not have, then stop there. Now, let us look at this place. So, there is when this algorithm will stop, when you cannot further expand it. Right? So, if no such, if no such A is found out, then stop, stop expanding row. Now, for each path we are doing that. Okay? So, this is only inductively defined, it does not say that at any stage it will stop, it may not stop even, right? because sigma is infinite and it is consistent sets, then it will not stop, it will go on forever. Imagine P 0, comma P 1, comma P 2, comma P 3 all proportional uh, variables. Right? Now, you will introduce at each stage one proposition, continue no expansion is required, still it goes on infinitely, right? one path only, it is all stacked and it is continuing infinitely, there is an infinite path. Is that clear? So, anything is possible there. Now, let us see your question, what happens here? How to develop a systematic table for this set? Okay. So, suppose you take these propositions as they are ordered, that is my sigma, as they are written, that is my ordering. So, I start with the first proposition which is P implies Q or R that finishes my stage 1. Okay. So, let me write here my stage number huh. just to keep my documentation. So, in stage 1 I have introduced this. Now, what I do in stage 2? I have to introduce second one if there is possibility. Suppose, nothing is there. Right? So, again it will go to stage 2. I have to write stage 2, apply the rule. There is nothing to introduce. Fine. If there is something, I have to introduce that. So, I introduce in stage 2, not R implies S and T, but stage 2 is not over. I have just introduced, because there is one. Then what I have to do? For each open path, I have to do something. So, this is the only path that is open. Now, I should go back to root. From root, I have to scan which one is the compound proposition on which a rule has not been applied. So, I find first proposition which is my A now, it is a dynamic variable there. Huh? So, it is my A, there I apply the rule. So, I get not P, Q or R, both of them have been obtained in stage 2, there and stage 2. Right? Nothing more. It does not say you do it again. Oh, okay. It is not a loop, it is telling that it is stage. That is all. So, suppose that stage has been performed, I have to go back again, follow the procedure. The loop will be on n directly, not there itself. There is no sub loop there. Okay. So, second stage is over. Now, I come to third stage. So, in third stage, what will happen? There is another. So, I have to introduce that. So, everywhere. Huh? 
it is not over, I have to again scan on each open path on which a compound proposition on which a rule has not been applied. So, first one I have already applied in every path, I am doing it breadfast so that it will be easier to look, easier to see it at least. Then second one I have not applied on this path, it is done daily path wise. So, on this path it has not been done, now I apply it that is again in the third stage. Okay. That is again in the third stage. So, it will have not, not, R, S and T, all these are done in third stage. Here also there is another open path, same proposition is taken there, S and T, they are my third stage. Okay. Third stage is over, that is the only thing I have to do. So, anything is closing that has to be checked always, nothing is closing till now. So, I go to fourth stage, fourth stage there is the fourth proposition. So, I have to introduce fourth stage. So, that gives T implies zero, T implies zero, T implies zero, T implies zero. Fourth stage starts with, starts with that. Then what I have to do? This is over. I have to look at each open path. So one open path is here. The leftmost I am taking. Where I have to find this compound proposition. Rule has been used. Rule has been used. It's literal. Literal. This is not a literal. Not not. Huh? Everything might be obvious for us, <laughs> but not for the algorithm. So on the fourth stage, I have to write R. This is done. Okay. We have not not rule. The rule can be applied, so I have to apply it. And I forget about that for that path in that stage. I come to next path where I have to find similarly. So, here again I get S and T. So, that is again fourth stage S T. Okay. So, that is also done. So, different propositions you might get in different paths that does not matter. So, next open path I take there Q or R that is also in fourth stage Q R okay. and this path same thing Q or R. So, that is again fourth stage as Q fourth stage as R. Fine. Next, I go to fifth stage. So, there is nothing more to be introduced. Hmm. Now, I have to first check whether anything is closing out of this. Anything is closing? Nothing. Hmm. Ah, this is closing T and not T. Right? That is closed. Next, about this, I have Q not t nothing is closing r nothing is closing right next path you can q r nothing is closing they remain open right so next i have to check each path whichever is open so you just the leftmost you have to take algorithm really says you start from the leftmost path and then continue so then i have to take this open path find out on where i have not applied a rule apply it that is the fifth stage. So, this is the proposition on which I have to apply a rule not T U. Okay. That is all about the fifth stage. Closed path I do not worry, open path. So, these two have been applied not T not not R. So, I have to write R that is all about the fifth stage. Huh? Then here again same thing, fifth stress R. It just does blindly, no intelligence. <laughs> so next one is again S and T. Huh? So fifth stress will be S, fifth stress will be T. And here also same thing, S, T. That's about the fifth stress. Over. Now, 
we have to again check whether something is closing or not. This one is not closing. U R not, not closing. Uh, there is also not closing, right? R there is also not closing. S T Q not T closing. T not T closing. Right? So fifth stage is over. Sixth stage I have started. While we are finding out which paths are open or closed. Now in the sixth stage, I have to go for the leftmost path. I see everything has been used. There is no other compound. Right? Next path, everything is used. Next path, mm -hmm. there is one, not used yet. So use it. That is six stairs. Here also same thing. Six stairs. Okay, six stairs over. Now seven stairs starts. Huh? So this doesn't close. This doesn't close. Nothing is closing. Nothing is expanded. Over. It closes. So that is also another way of telling the stopping criterion. If you get some open paths as the last stage, you can stop. Because in the next step only you are verifying the whether some path is closing or not. Now you can compare this systematic tabula with the one you had already constructed earlier. Huh? This one. Right? Systematic tabula will be bigger. Huh? That is clear, does not matter. But there is a copy of this tabula inside it somewhere. May not be in the same form, same order, something else might be inside because they have closed early, so they can expand, that is fine. But then a copy is there. So, systematic tabula is necessarily a completed tabula, right? It has to be completed. But that you are guessing only from the finite case. If it is infinite case, how do you justify that a systematic tabula is necessarily a completed tabula? But you take any systematic tabula, it has to be completed. Why is it so? Well, if it is not completed, then what happens? There exists at least one path which is not completed, right? So, it is not a completed path, means what? Hmm? Okay. So, that compound proposition has been obtained by the tabula either there or it is originally in the sigma. If it is originally in sigma, then it should have been introduced in some stress. Right? So, it has been obtained. If it has been obtained, then from the root to that place, whatever is the number, say m, then it will be used in stress m. Right. So, always we are concerned with the finiteness, even though tabula look infinite, we are really can get away with, with finiteness. Fine. So, now systematic tabula is completed. Once it is completed, what you have to do for consistency? You just go for the systematic tabula and then decide if there exists an open path, then it is consistent. Only thing for infinite. What to do? You cannot have a systematic tabula at all. No, no, Why not? Only check. In the sense, you can never come. Okay, you can never complete the systematic tabula. You can check only if it is inconsistent. Hmm? Yeah, you cannot check for consistency. Huh. Yeah, if it is inconsistent. Yeah, if it is consistent, then you can't. You can't. If it is inconsistent, it will then it will close. Everything will close in a yeah. finite stage. So it's verified. Otherwise, it may go for infinite. If it goes for infinite, can you say it is inconsistent or it is consistent? No. no. There might be a future. Hmm? There might be a uh, future pro yes. exercise yes. which yes. might be. You cannot say. Hmm? No, whether it will stop or not. Yeah, you cannot say. No, it need not stop. It is infinite. You are telling it is infinite. So there is one infinite path, let us say. In the tabula, there is one infinite path in the system in a systematic tabula. 
Now, does it mean it has to be open or it is closed or it can be anything? Hmm? If it is anything, it will close at some finite stage. Once it is closed, it has to be finite. Why is it so? It can close, but it cannot be com uh, complete. Huh? Are we considering infinite number of literals or finite number of literals with infinite number of literals? There can be infinite number of literals also, right? As we told, there can be a set with P0, P1, P2, P3 and so on. So you cannot see Right? Suppose you say one path is closing, there is a path which is closed. Is it necessarily finite? It is finite. No? Path is finite, is not it? Yes, path is finite or not? Huh? Yeah. If a path is closed, is it necessarily finite? Yes. 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 Huh? Then if there is one infinite path, it has ah. to be open? You cannot determine whether that path is infinite or uh, That is a separate matter. <laughs> If it is uh, uh, yeah. infinite, then it should be open. Is that so? Yes. Yeah. Either finite or infinite, whether it is finite or infinite is the problem. So, you are not able to decide whether it remains infinite or it remains finite. But it is true that if it is closed, it has to be finite. Right? If it is infinite, it has to be open. Right? There can be finite open paths. That is okay. Right? If set of proportions is finite from the beginning. Yes. Fine? Okay. So, what we see here is from the systematic tabula, we have to be concerned about this finiteness thing. Right? Finiteness closed, finiteness open. Okay? Now, there is something which we may need because finiteness is not easy to look in the tabula itself. Okay. So, finiteness will give you something more there, we will see what does it mean. Let us take any general tree, what happens there? See all these tabula are binary trees, right. So, you have a binary tree here, in that binary tree you are telling whether it is goes to infinite or not, I do not know, right. It is an infinite binary tree and then I do not know what happens, whether one path remains open or not. Okay? Now, if it is not a binary tree, you take any general tree and you know that it is finitely generated, that every node has only finite number of children. How many you do not know? Can you tell in that case something? I am slightly asking a difficult question, but it might be easier to see. Huh? See, you have a binary tree here, that means you take any node it has less than or equal to two children, right? Maybe one only, less than or equal to. Now consider one finitely generated tree, which means you take any node there, it will have finite number of children, not infinite number of children, right? As usual. But that finite number I am not giving what it is. There may not be any bound. Right? It can grow, like from level one, each one will have one child. Level two, each one will have two children level 3, each one can have 3 children and so on, but this is also finitely generated. Is that clear? Possible? Random, random. It is random. I am giving an example that you cannot say there is a maximum number of but children of anyone, finite. right? That is possible. Then in that case, what can you say about uh, paths? Suppose the tree is finite or infinite, I give something. Say so, tree is infinite. Does there exist an infinite path or not? Why is it so?